Good morning, everyone. How are we doing out there? Super excited to jump back on another live for us this morning. Let's start off with gratitude. I'd love to um, open things up. Let us know in the comments what you are grateful for. And um, looks like we are in the right group and ready to rock. So I'll tell you, start off with my moment of gratitude. Dorothy usually gets up in the morning and does a run. We're up at, um, now we're up at 5 a.m. <laughs> Before our um, flight of our life, <laughs> we were up at um, 4 a.m., 4, 4.30 regularly. Crazy, right? Not really. I explained that quite a bit. If you want me to explain it again, I'll let you know. But we're up at 5 now. And um, so usually she jumps on the treadmill. A little guy's still sleeping. And um, he was up early. So I grabbed him so she can get her workout in. I guess I should say, she was up with him early. I got my workout in. Then I went and grabbed him. And she got her run in on the treadmill. And... Um, and we went for a morning walk, me and him. It was like, it was just two of us. And it was, it was um, still dark out. And we just cruised around the neighborhood. I mean, good morning, Michael and Emma and Pam. Thank you all for joining live. If you guys want to share anything that you're grateful for, I'd definitely love to hear. But at any rate, we walked around the block. We got, um, we got his boots on and jacket and toque and off we went. <laughs> So today I'm going to shine some light on this subject around fats, like healthy fats in general. It's, uh, I feel like it's one of those topics that like, there's so much information out there. It's a bit unclear of what the facts or what the truth is. And I'll share my experience and my truth and what I've learned. Of course, you'll hear something different from someone else, but um, I'll share I'll share with you my experiences and how we train, how we coach, how we live. And it's probably worth mentioning because I feel like many times experts, I'll put some air quotations on that one, they don't actually do the things that they teach. It's its such an interesting concept to me like, okay, you can look at all walks. You can look at mechanics. You can look at a dentist. You can look at doctors. And like, if they're not living what they're portraying, like I lived in LA for quite, uh, quite, a, um, quite an extensive amount of time, and I used to like, go to a gym. I was like, a tw I don't remember what it was like, twenty four hour fitness or something, and there was there was so many people, right, and so much need for like the beach bodies, and like there was trainers that were, that was, oh gosh, I gotta close this here. Let me close that window. Um, there were trainers that were overweight, and I'm like, how could you possibly? train someone else or teach someone else if you don't know what you're doing and it's just lower level right like lower level entry um and the same thing like okay dentists are fantastic like usually dentists have like perfect teeth right <laughs> at least the ones that i've encountered and like would you go to a dentist that doesn't have nice teeth but then we go to like we go to you go to a doctor or like you, you could look at don't worry i'm not gonna get all political on you <laughs> but you could look at like health ministers or like <laughs> bill gates <laughs> Okay, I'm getting political. <laughs> like, these people are telling us what we should do about our health. <laughs> and they look terribly ill. Um, and it, that's it, the do doctors are a tough one for me. Like, you know, you can tell from, like, a lot of doctors, they're not, they're not that healthy. <laughs> right? And they're like, you should do this. And I'm like, <laughs> maybe you should do that. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's a very interesting concept to sit and laugh at yourself. <laughs> oh, good morning, Chrissy. Good morning, Shelly. So all I'm saying is like, so like same thing with like me mechanic. Like their cars bro broken down, breaking down, and like they're a mechanic, fix it guys. Their house is falling apart. Like that's just my opinion, right? It's not. not I'm saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying like if you're going to trust someone, I feel like they should probably be living that life right or portraying what they're doing like and i'm not, I'm not saying like we're perfect we're, we're far from perfect we're human i'll tell you like I'm, i try to be as vulnerable, vulnerable as possible to let you know that oh, like we skipped workouts and we eat pizza once in a while and 
we don't always make the best choices, right? But we do, we do a pretty good job. And we, and like what we teach, we live. So it doesn't make any sense for me to be like, like keto is obviously a, a hot topic. It wouldn't make sense for me to be like, you should eat keto because of all these benefits. And I don't eat keto because I don't believe in it. Like it doesn't make sense. But you're teaching or telling other people to do it. I could tell you that so, certain amounts, like a small percentage, but certain types of people can see benefits from it, right? It's very short term, but um, which is where the yo-yo dieting is, which we'll, which we'll get into. But um, it's impo- I think it's important to understand that wherever you're getting your information, I feel like you should find the source and also f- figure out why they're sharing that information. Because many times that information is paid for. Like that information is sponsored by whatever, right? Like whatever giant conglomerate is, is behind that message is because they're trying to push that product or sell that product. So that's something to, um, that's certainly something to consider when you are getting your information. Um, at, at any rate, let's get into fats. Let's get into fats a bit more. So um, where to start? So fats in general, are feared because of the name of them, right? So I should maybe I should mention that um, fats are one of the macros. So macros is, doesn't mean anything like it's a fancy word. Or a lot of people are like, what are macros? You're teaching macros. You're talking about macros. Macros is just the name. It, it's there's four macros. That's it. It's very simple. There's um, protein, fats, carbs, and antioxidants. It's your vegetables. So I, I feel like sometimes we try to overcomplicate things. So for me, I learn very simply. I think very simply. I don't, I'm not like a medical and scientific, scientific, I was going to say. <laughs> um, I, that's just how I am. And I feel like in most cases, we get caught up in the fancy words and the, or in the terminology and acronyms and things that are just confusing and it doesn't have to be. So to make it as simple as possible, fats is one of the four macros, and it's our belief that you need fats in your body. Now, some people avoid fats like the plague. No fats in their diet. And um, in my opinion, that's a mistake. But I'll also say um, a lot of people, like we believe in a balance of the four macros. That's where we, that's how we live. That's where we've seen incredible results. And we've gone on detoxes, and we've gone on fasts, and We've just never felt as good as we have by balancing the four macros. And that's why we teach them. That's why we believe in them. That's why we live like that. So you may find someone that follows a completely different diet that believes in it, that or lifestyle, I should say, that believes in it, that teaches it. And um, that's what I'm saying is that like, it's so interesting to me when people say, I've tried everything. And I feel like, like okay, <laughs> I just put up a post, I think, about have you tried being consistent? Because most people are not consistent. They try things for a very short short amount of time. They've tried nothing, so they're being consistent with nothing for 20 years. Or yo-yo dieting, which means you try something for 30 days, um, uh, maybe, so 30 days, maybe 90 days, maybe six months, a very small chance that people would commit to something that, that long term. And then they jump off and they're like, oh, it doesn't work. So. For, for you, whatever you're trying, I would first say be consistent. And then if that's not working, if you're trying it for six months to a year and that's not working for you, then try something else. If you're early on, if it's like two weeks in or three weeks in and you're like, this program is horrible, it's not even close to what I can handle, then okay, go try something else. But also consider, are you doing that often? Does nothing work because you're not willing to expand your mind or try new things? See, like a lot of people have a very small scope of success, if you will. They have a very small scope of what they're willing to try to do. Uh, Their mindset is so shrunken down, (laughs) for lack of a better word. They can't, they've got the blinders on and they're not willing to try anything else. And the problem with with that is, is one of my favorite quotes is, if you're not willing to try something or what's what is it if you want something you've never had you must be willing to do something you've never done and in most cases people are willing to do this much right and they see this much results and those of you listening i'm just putting my hands up about six inches apart three inches (laughs) if you're only willing to put in three inches of um effort or change in your life 
you're only gonna get three inches of results, right? The more you put in, the more you get out. If you're willing to put in three feet, then you're obviously you're widening your scope of success. You're giving your chance, yourself a chance to see much more results. So when it comes to fats, there's people like, no fats, can't have fats. And the problem with that is, is that you, I believe you need fats to help burn bad fat. You need fats to help fuel your metabolism. You need fats to help um, not just burn body fat, but to give you energy. So those are three reasons, significant reasons in my opinion, why you need fats in your diet. So you have people that aren't able to burn body fat, but they're not, not eating fats. So, so they say, I, I've tried everything, but I can't burn body fat. And they say, have you tried eating fats? Say, oh, no, no, I don't do that. Like, well, have you tried it? No, it doesn't work for me, <laughs> right? So that's a limiting mindset while you're not seeing the results you're looking for. You have to open up your mind. You have to open up your mind, right? And then we're probably not eating enough fats. Consider that or the wrong fats. So I'll get into that here in a moment. But if you're not having like MCT oil, for example, grass-fed butter, avocado, those are top three of my top three, obviously, fats. Like if you're not having those on a regular basis, like, oh yeah, I had avocado once a week. Okay, <laughs> that's a pretty short amount of time or a very small amount of fats for your body. Like for your, think about your brain health, right? Is your and then we have oh I'm my I'm uh, I have brain fog, or I can't think in the afternoon. Like okay, what kind of fats are you consuming? Because the fats work directly with the brain to offer mental clarity, especially if you're looking at a product like MCT oil. So why not add a healthy fat in at that time? So the thing is that. You have to look at what what benefit are you looking for. A lot of times people will say, what they'll say, what product of yours should I try? And I say, well, <laughs> what I could I could just throw out a random number, right? But or a random product, but I want them to help. I want to help people. So it doesn't make any sense for me to say just say a product. I would say, what benefits are you looking for? And that's where the questions come in. And people are so adverse to answering questions like, how can I help if you're not willing to answer questions? We got a bunch of people in here. Vince jumped in here. Um, Angela, Sandra. Good morning, Sandra. Good morning, Angela. Happy Monday to you. Um, so uh, you have to be willing to um, try new things is, was my point. And then when it comes to like questions, like people don't want to answer questions. I get all the time. Someone just reached out and they said, hey, are you able to, um, I have typed, I have, maybe I shouldn't say exactly in case they small chance they're listening but they said hey could you do you work with people that have this and I'm like I'm like yeah we've been doing this for a long time we have clients right now that have dealing with what you're dealing dealing with but I need to ask you some questions they're like they're like well, what's the price and I'm like the price of what <laughs> like I don't, we didn't even talk about anything and then they, I said I'm gonna need to ask you some questions before I can give you a price or a idea of what we can do to help you and they said not it then they roll back not interested <laughs> and I'm like okay like great thanks for not wasting my time because <laughs> I guess I could have went through a bunch of questions and then the, then they could have been like not interested so they actually did me a favor by not <laughs> being willing to answer questions right it's such an odd concept but you my point is is that you have to understand like what are you looking for if you're looking to burn body fat like in most cases fats will help burn body fat right not just fats a balance but fats are important so are carbohydrates, but then you have to look at, oh, my, I have a lot of brain fog. I don't think very clearly. Okay, what types of fats can help with that, right? So you have to help, help whoever you're working with diagnose or at least have a clear idea of the benefits that you're looking for when it comes to um, a product or service, let's say. But um, like more directly, let, let's dig in a little bit here. So the fats that I would suggest that you consider, so for me, I have a C8 MCT oil in my morning tea. So this is, I get these questions all the time, which are fine. Most people say, what are, what are you drinking in the morning? I drink bone broth almost every morning. And I drink, um, that I make myself and I make, and I drink this every morning though. So this is Pu'er tea and Ashitaba tea. And then I put, um, uh, so tons of antioxidant benefits, energy benefits, uh, cell healing benefits from the inside out. So I have this in the morning instead of coffee. Go ahead and have your coffee. I don't, I don't no judgment. Do what you want. <laughs> this makes me feel great in the morning. I put C8 MCT oil in here, and then I also put grass-fed butter. And that mental clarity, energy boost, you're talking about getting up in the morning and going full tilt, that's what I do, and, and, that's, and this helps for me. 
may not help for you or for everyone, but that is beneficial to me. Pu'er teas also helps digestion as well. It's a fermented tea. So if you want to talk more about teas, we can get into that a little bit later or in another topic. But so that's what I choose to consume in the morning. But I also have a, sh I also often have a shake, like first thing in the morning, our vanilla protein shake to get a boost of protein. And then often that has a few other things in there, like, like turmeric, um, um, and put MCT oil in there as well. I put MCT oil on just about anything, to be honest with you. <laughs> just because of the health benefits. Okay, so those are a couple things that I recommend is you're looking at MCT oil, make sure it's C8, which is caprylic acid. You're looking at um, a grass-fed butter. Ghee is a really good fat that you could cook with, for example. Um, coconut oil, different from... Um, coconut oil, different from... MCT oil, so MCT oil is like a chain or a concentrated um, carbon from MCT oil. So I gotta tell you this, and and, and like I'm, I'm open, I'm honest, I'm, I'm candid, like I had a friend that she's very much in the medical world and that was that she works in a hospital every day. And she said, she told me that she's like, oh, coconut oil is bad for you. And I said, what, what are you talking about? And she said, oh, we have people come in all the time with clogged arteries and it's because of coconut oil. And I'm like, Okay. <laughs> and I'm okay with that, right? Like I'm okay with that. And like, I don't have those reservations of like, if I have friends that have very different political beliefs than I do, we're still friends. I feel like we have this, we live in this odd type of world where if someone doesn't believe what you believe, or if someone doesn't voice the same opinion as you, then you like you shouldn't be friends or there should be clear separation. Like it's entirely odd to me, but I just want to share that with you because Every, like when I mentioned earlier, like everyone's going to have a different opinion and, and you should do research. I, I interviewed, um, gosh, Mark Sisson. And he is, if you haven't heard of him, he's quite a big name in the paleo world. He's got a number of different products. He believes in clean ingredients. He li believes in the paleo diet, obviously. Um, not obviously, I don't love that word. But um, he lives paleo. He teaches it. He has a huge team big business, a primal blueprint is his business. I interviewed him. You can check it out on the podcast if you like. But um, he said, which I believe 100% is like, you shouldn't believe me. Go and do your own research. Do your own guessing and testing on your own body if you want to. Like, don't just believe one source or one person. I, I think that's a scary place to be in is to like, you read one article and that's your truth. And I feel like most of our beliefs in our life like most of our beliefs have come from someone else that has either just shared their opinion or it was from like a, from early on and it was from like a teacher or a parent that may or may not have known what they're talking about it was just their opinion and i don't mean to say that crudely or disrespectfully i'm just saying like everyone has their opinion so the beliefs that we believe to be true and we live that truth like i'm we're going to do a talk for our map members here and that's going to be um, on Tuesday. We do live coaching every Tuesday. Um, and um, it's a group thing. Like whoever shows up, like shows up on Zoom when we celebrate wins, Q&A at the end, training session in the middle. But um, I'm going to talk about why you've, why you've been lied to your whole life when it comes to fitness. I'm not going to share too much of that because that, that's for them. But part of that, a little snippet is going to be we've been lied to to believe we don't have time for exercise right that is a a thought that came from somewhere else that we believe in our mind and now that is our truth that we live so our actions show everything else in the world is more important than getting that workout in because that's of our, our belief system and what i'm going to do we have some mat members that have not missed a single workout which is absolutely incredible and i know who's in here i know sandra gets her workouts in on a regular basis like every day right or every time every week um, I know Angela's, Angela's super active as well, but at any rate, I'm going to ask everyone that gets their workout in every time that they're supposed to, that scheduled, what their mindset is around workouts. And I can tell you, it's going to be very different from someone that believes that they don't have time because that truth was um, put on them. And in my opinion, that's a lie. It's just a truth that we live. So if we could relate that back to fats, for example, many people feel that fats are bad for you so we're not consuming them and you could look at my friend medical world very different um, knowledge in most cases knowledge understanding and um they would believe something different like 
someone told her, <laughs> and like, okay, this is my opinion, right? And that this is my opinion, my research I've done. We've, we've been using coconut oil for years. I've done lots and lots of research. And those sources, those sources that I've found are reputable in my opinion. So for me, when I do research, it's not like quick Google search. It's deep dive of, of I tried to find three to five different articles. I find different case studies and then where they came from. So you could look at John Hopkins, for example, like, is that a good source? Now you can look at Harvard Medical, um, like are what types of sources? And then you could look at, then you look at some websites and whoever's writing that you can see, like sometimes it says source by, and it's a company that's selling that product. Like it's very similar to, um, maybe we don't get into that, but like the milk industry or calcium, right? Like you have to understand like who is pushing that on you. Like the, the everyone's like grains, grains, you got to have so much grains. Like look at the Canada food guide. <laughs> I'm pushing all kinds of buttons this morning. Look, look at the Canada food guide. Like what, like who put that together? Was it a health minister that's terribly healthy or unhealthy? And what's behind that? Like what products are being sold that are influencing that backwards pyramid to be pushed on our society? And then can you live like that in a healthy manner? I mean, those are questions you should ask yourself. I have very clear answers in my head of what I believe. And I'm not trying to make you believe anything you don't want to. I'm just telling you that you should really question what's happening with everything, but why people are telling you the things that they do. Like why does um, a good friend of mine, one of my best friends, why do they believe that coconut oil isn't bad for you? Like, where did that truth come from? And maybe it's true. <laughs> maybe it's true. It's just not my opinion. And it's not the way we, it's not the way we live. Um, so, so healthy fats are, I'll go over them real quick again. So you want to, and you want to add these every day. I'm not talking about once a week. And I'm not even talking about once a day. Like when I say I have MCT oil every, like, I put in everything. I have it three, probably three times a day. That's not including avocado, um, uh, like real avocado. You can use avocado. I'm talking about the, for the fruit. I like it, um, and I use it on like every day. I try to have a piece of avocado, quarter or half, depending on how much other fats are in my day. But um, so an avocado or avocado oil. You could look at um, uh, like I talked about grass-fed butter, butter. If you're a butter fan. Um, of course, it costs more than conventional, but anything that's better quality costs more. That's just how it works. Um, any questions? Morning, Dan. Morning, Leanne. Um, any questions about fats in general? I'd love to help answer for you or help clear up. So when I said fats on a regular basis, fats in just about every meal or fats throughout the day. And I'm talking about three times a day. So fats in my tea, fats are going to be at lunch, and then fats are going to be at dinner. And then I usually put like an afternoon, we call it a spritzer with ninja and our magtin. It's a magnesium <clears throat> and MCT oil again. Probably cooking with coconut oil in the evening. And um, that's how I spread out fats throughout the day. And in my opinion, that's super important. I also have a, pe a peanut butter and banana. So you have your peanut butter as a fat, right? And um, to me... I'm not afraid of fats and I'm not overweight and I eat fats all day. <laughs> so consider that. And that's, my, so that's my truth, right? Is that if I was, if I believed that fats made some, like healthy fats made someone or helped encourage people to be overweight, then when I tried it or lived that way, I would be overweight, right? Does that, does that make sense? Like, am I, are you bagging what I'm mowing? <laughs> I'm saying like you have to live your experiences, right? If I was eating too much, if I was eating all those fats all day long and then I was overweight, then I'd be like, okay, maybe it's the fats, but it could be the carbs, right? It could be the quality of food. It could be that I'm not a very, don't live a very active lifestyle. That's why it's really difficult when someone asks you a question and they don't want to answer questions to dive deeper into getting an answer. Like how do we figure this out? It's through information. So um, being open, being open and um, finding solutions for your answers, right? Having an open mind of living one way and thinking that that's the only way. But but we don't realize that we've been living the same way for 20 some years, right? It's crazy. Like, I'll tell you a quick story and then I'll tell you facts that you should stay away from is that I was stretching 
So I was stretching, uh, and I'm going to do a whole case study here, but I was stretching the same way, very similar to what I learned through athletics growing up. And I don't feel like I was, um, I've always been, uh, I should say, I don't feel like I've ever been that flexible. And, and I don't want that to, when I look at older people, the number one concern or the number one thing I see that holds them back is mobility. So that could be knees, hips, elbows, back, um, but flexibility in general. So I found this program that I paid for online, and that's part of the step-by-step process I believe in to see results. Otherwise, I could go on YouTube and find a bunch of free stuff, right? That I'm not going to use because <laughs> that's how I am. That's how most of the world is. If you, you're financially invested, you're emotionally invested, there's a much better chance you're going to do it or use it. So I paid for the stretching program. The guy supposedly can teach you how to do the splits. <laughs> and that was never even a thought process of mine. I'm like, I don't really want to do the splits. I just want to be more flexible and more mobile. So I thought if I could even get close to doing the splits, I'd be way more, I'd be way more um, flexible than I ever have been. And and for me, my personal opinion is that we shouldn't expect our health to decline or to be able to do less things physically, probably emotionally and mentally as well, as we get older. Like we shouldn't put that limitation on our body. So I was like, oh, that'd be cool. I've never been able to do the splits younger, at a younger age. Why not try it at at the age I am now? So the stretches are completely different. I guess what what my point is, is that the stretches are completely different than what I've been doing, right? That I've been doing for years. And I was like, and I thought to myself, my gosh, I've been doing very similar stretches for a long time, most of my life. And it would just opened up my mind a little bit. And that's the thing is what I'm trying to share with you and and express to you is that you have to be willing to open your mind to to try new things to see different results. And for me, like I've, and I've I've only been doing it for a week and, and I'm already more flexible, right? Because this is a very specific program for um, flexibility. I have a different mindset. I paid for it. You have a a mentor coach. It's a step-by-step process that we teach in that MAP program for you to see results. That's what I'm going through myself in a different area of flexibility. And I want to share that with you when it comes to fats or macros or nutrition in general is that if you have limiting mindsets around fat, or if you only have one type of fat, that that fat only has certain amount of properties. You need different fats in your diet to see a well-rounded approach or a well-rounded benefit to all that fats have to offer. So that's that's important to understand is when, when you're trying different fats or when you're using different fats, it shouldn't always be olive oil or it shouldn't always be like olive oil always goes in my salad. That's always, that's, that's all I use. Or I only cook with butter. I love it. It's fantastic. Great. But understand that you are offering a very limited ability for you to see more results because you're not willing to open up your mind, try different things to see different results, right? Good morning, mom. Morning, John. Um, okay. Hemp seeds, healthy fats. Hemp seeds are hundred percent healthy fats. Yes. That's a great one. So one of our products is complete truth protein. I feel like you should know this, Deanne. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So, um, complete truth protein. We use, uh, hemp seeds, which are a complete protein, which means they have the complete lineup of amino acids that you need um, to complete a protein. Like a complete protein is like a meat product, right? So from plant-based, you usually have to combine different plants to get a complete protein. Well, hemp seeds on their own is a complete protein. So if you want to add healthy fats, so I guess, let me take a step back. So our complete truth protein, which is our first product, is it was initially for for um, smoothies, then we realized more people used in baking. So we now have our CTP, Complete Truth Protein, which is hemp seeds in quinoa processed into a powder. And that's better for baking. And we have our vanilla protein for smoothies. I should do a whole, I'll do a whole conversation on that here in the near near future for you guys, uh, or a whole live training. But um, hemp seeds are fantastic. So you can sprinkle them on you can sprinkle them on your yogurt, your granola. You can throw them in a smoothie. I would highly recommend having hemp seeds. They're in our diet on a regular basis. And I don't know why I don't mention them more often. <laughs> so thanks for sharing that, Deanne. You know what's interesting is that, okay, we got this, um, it's called almond cow. And um, we got it as a gift and it makes milk instantly. It's absolutely amazing. So you have, um, you have this little cup and then you put different fats in there. 
or seeds. So we put hemp seeds in there, cashews, um, coconut flakes, and um, <clears throat> not sure what else. It's usually a combination of a bunch of healthy fats. So we put that with, with filtered water. We boil our water. We put that in there with water and we push a button. <laughs> That's all we do. So we push a button. And um, in about three minutes, we have almond milk. Like it's beautiful. It's fresh. It's like pressed nuts and seeds. Like that's a great way to get healthy fats in. And, and the problem is, is like I'm a fan of plant milk. But the problem is, is that usually they have junk in there like natural flavors, carrageenan, things that shouldn't be in there, sugar, of course. Um, so we, we started making our own almond milk on and off for years, but we would blend it, then use a cheesecloth and it was kind of messy. So if you have the means, <laughs> I would, ha or if you want a, a Christmas gift or a birthday gift coming up here, ask for an almond cow. It's absolutely amazing. But that's another way to get healthy fats in because that milk is just fats. It's beautiful. And what we do is we take the extract, um, and we, throw that into a smoothie for more healthy fats. So we're getting, like we eat a lot of fats. I gotta I got tell you, sometimes it surprises me how often we eat fats, I don't even realize it. And, and again, understand that we have a balance of all the macros. So we're also eating proteins, we're also eating complex carbs, um, and we eat a lot of vegetables. Like most of our plate is vegetables. So, and then we have our greens, like we eat greens all day long, like throughout the day. So like our green tablets. So we do get a well balanced, but our fat content is quite high, which why I believe is our metabolism is high and also our uh, energy level is high. Okay, quick story. We went to the, we went to some, met to some friends at the airport and I think it was an accident. Like we were, we were at the airport. I don't think we, we didn't travel together. They went one way and we went the other way, but we met at the airport and they were like, we were like, we're like this, like this is how we are in the morning. You should see Dorothy. She's like, bing, hey, how you doing? And I'm like, I, I need like 20 minutes to wake up. But we're alive and alert and we usually work out or we're active. We're doing stuff in the morning and our friends were like, it was, I think it was like seven in the morning and they're like, yeah. they, they look like they just rolled out of bed and they were like, and, and they're like, I need a coffee. And, and we're kind of like, what's wrong with you guys? <laughs> And they're like, what's wrong with you guys? It's seven in the morning. And we're like, what do you mean seven? We got a workout in, we have breakfast, we're feeling good. So um, that's just different, right? Like that's just different like energy levels, right? A lot of people are like, oh, I don't have enough energy throughout the day. So for me, it's like, this is for another video, but activity level, are you working out? Because that's a great way to increase your energy levels. Um, your, your diet, like your balanced diet, like what are you having? Are you consuming fats? Or you have a balance of macros? Probably not, right? Like most people are carb heavy. Like, and that's just how it works. Like in this world, that's why keto is so difficult for most people. They're like, oh, I've seen all kinds of results on keto. Like, okay, and then what? Oh, then I gained it all back and then so, right? And then they do keto again. And then they get off keto and then what happens? You gain it all back. And I'm not like, I don't care. Like, like keto's fine. There are benefits to keto. I just think it's really difficult. Like there's this huge push and everyone's talking about it and everyone's tried it. And I just think like, if everyone's tried it and it works for this amount of people long-term, and like I said, it will work short-term. Um, it works for this small amount of people, then it doesn't really work, right? It's not that effective, but everyone wants to try it because you get short-term results. And the problem there is that you are in a state of deprivation, like you're depriving yourself of calories of, um, I, like, I feel like keto is probably not, they don't do a whole lot around vegetables, in my opinion. So you, and everyone has different like visions or shades, right? Someone could be like really on keto and uh, eats a lot of vegetables, which in my opinion, or what I've found is rare. <clears throat> it's the quality for me, like the quality. Some people, oh, I can eat whatever I want as long as it's, it doesn't have carbs and I'm like, okay, how do you think your arteries are going to enjoy that, right? Um, <clears throat> so at, at any rate, I, I think that there's definitely benefits to whatever it is that you're going to try. It's just really difficult to look at that. And I mean, the thing is that we get people coming to us and like, oh, I've only tried keto. And I'm like, okay, well, we don't do, <clears throat> we don't do anything keto. So if that's what you're interested, then um, like we're not going to be able to help you because we don't teach that. And then, and then sometimes people are like, okay, I'm going to try. I'm going to try your thing. 
because they're used to yo-yoing on keto, right? Like no set plan. They're just like, I'm going to cut carbs. And they cut carbs and then they realize there's parties and gatherings and there's there's breads and um, grains. And it's really hard to stay away from it. So then they get off keto and they gain it back. And then, so so they're used to the yo-yo, right? So they come with us and they're like, oh, okay, I'm going to try your program. And then in their mind, they're like, when I'm done your program, I'm going to go back to keto. It's even more results. And I'm like, no, <laughs> stop. Like, that's not working. If that's, if like whatever it is, doesn't have to be keto, right? It could be paleo or it could be, um, uh, could be your own calorie counting, right? Like there's a dozen different things out there. But if you keep going back to what's, what's not working, like a lot of times people are like, they're, they've tried everything on their own. They feel like they've tried everything on their own. Then they're like, okay, I'm going to try your program. See great results. And then they're like, awesome. Now I'm going to go back. <laughs> to what wasn't working. And I'm like, what are you talking about? You've proved that doesn't work. You've been consistent with that for 20 years, showing that doesn't work, and this works. So you're gonna do this short term, right? <laughs> Three months, six months, and be like, I'm done. We're gonna go back to what hasn't been working for 20 years. Like, that's our mindset, right? So what I'm trying to do here is ex explain to you, like, you can break that mindset. You can start fresh. You can build back up with a new foundation and understand that stick with what's working open up your mind frame to see new results trying different things. If you're only willing to do one thing all the time, you're only gonna see those same results. Um, so let me finish off with, oh, we had, um, Keisha jumped in here, Julie jumped in here. Thank you guys for jumping in and out. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I'm gonna wrap things up here in just a few minutes. I wanted to mention seeds or oils that you should probably staying away from. Like, you could look at um, oils that like, your, excuse me, your seed oils, right? Canola oil, um, cotton seed oil, grape seed oil, like most of those, not hemp seed oil, right? <laughs> but a lot of those seed oils, um, what are the ones? The ones I'm thinking of like sunflower oil, safflower oil, like those are seed oils. And here's the thing is they're processed palm oil. Sorry, <laughs> there's a lot of them and they're in most packaged foods. And the problem with that is, <clears throat> the problem with that is they cause inflammation in your body. <clears throat> and if they're causing inflammation in your body, their inflammation causes chronic pain. So a lot of people have been consuming those seed oils for years. And it's the same thing what I'm talking about here. They consume th those that for years, they get off it. And they're like, okay, I'm going to avoid seed oils, which is really difficult, right? Because it's in processed foods and packaged foods. All those little Halloween candies, you can bet they have seed oils in it. They're just a cheap filler to help um, help keep all the nonsense together, right? So you got your cheap seed oils, and they're cheap. Like those little candy bars, are they cost nothing, right? A big box of them costs, what, 10 bucks? You get 50 of them. So obviously, whatever it took to put them together had to be the cheapest ingredients possible to make it that low price. That's why I say if you want better quality, you pay more because it costs more. The raw ingredients alone cost more. And we design our own products so we know what it takes to bring in the better quality products. Like our raw products, for some, like our raw ingredients for some of our products at cost are more than, than some of the cheap without profit, right? And we have to do packaging and labeling and shipping and broken broken bottles or lost packages. Like all that has to be built into our pricing. And our cost is often cost more than some of those cheap, low quality products because their ingredients are so low quality that are going to cause inflammation and they're going to cause chronic pain. So my point here is that is that if you are consuming those low quality products, you're going to run into health issues. And the problem here is that what I was talking about with my examples of bouncing around is like, okay, I'm going to try coconut oil or whatever oil. I'm going to try or MCT. I'm going to try that for three days, three weeks, three months, whatever it is, short term. If you're doing one thing for 20 years, that's been causing you chronic health issues. And then you're going to go try something else for a short amount of time relative to what you were doing. And then you're going to say, oh, it's not working. Why am I paying more for this? I've tried it for three weeks. I'm going to go back to that other nonsense that brought me to this pain, right? So it's that mindset that I'm trying to work on with you here is that you have to be willing to try something long term to see the benefits of it. And um, and those are the, the, that's what I wanted to share with you about. Like those are, so those are omega-6 oils and um, omega-6 and 9. So they're not always bad, but you need a balance. And for us, our our lower end is like, so think of omega-6 and 9 as more like 
um, oh gosh, I lost it, oh, or, of carbohydrates, for example. <coughs> the week just started and my voice is gone. <laughs> Me tough getting through these calls this week. Okay, so think about, and then you have your antioxidants or protein, for example, or even fats. Those are like your omega-3s. Is that helping? Is this hitting home with anyone? Let me know in the comments is it, if this is helpful or if I'm way out to lunch. So our diets are mostly carb heavy. That would be your, your fats that are, sorry, I didn't mean all omegas, your fats that are six and nine, for example. And then we're looking at this other macros that are like probably fats, proteins, and, um, and veggies, antioxidants, right? that's less so what i'm trying to explain here is that you need a well balance you need more balance of better fats in your diet to gain energy burn body fat feel better improve digestion the list goes on so the problem is, is that we are fat heavy on the on those rancid oils like when you go to the store and, I, and honestly like i live in our own little bubble and i do our own little research and then i go outside and i'm like at the grocery store and i see people that have big jugs of like Crisco oil and I'm like people still use that and then I, I actually did this I went to the oil section and I don't notice it anymore right because I just go to the section where I know like you go to the grocery store and you go to the section where you buy the stuff that you want so I went to the grocery store I saw someone like a Crisco or like a giant canola oil bottle and I'm like people still buy that and then I was like wait a second they still sell that so I went over to the oil section and at the bottom bottom row these big containers of this really low quality oil that's causing a whole lot of pain for a whole lot of people. And I think to myself, like, it's it's so challenging to sift through all the nonsense and to believe, like, a lot of people believe, oh, it's cheap. There's a lot of it. It's way cheaper. Why would I buy that one? It's because of the education piece, right? So um, for, that, for those, like, that is, um, that's a rancid oil. So, you know, oils are rancid when they, 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 I mean, they, have, a, they have a specific odor or smell and they are in a clear plastic container. So you want a dark bottled container. That's what you want. So um, that's, um, that's how you tell if a product is rancid or not. Um, I wanna wrap things up here, but I don't see any questions. I'm gonna wrap things up here and I'm gonna offer you guys something that we haven't done before. So those, only those of you that are watching, which, which isn't a ton of you, but we're, we're gonna do a, uh, um, our MCT, our C8 MCT is on back, back order. I didn't talk about it too much because I didn't want this to be a whole show about buy our products. Um, I've talked about um, yeah, MCT oils and different chains in the different chain, excuse me, chains in the past. But um, we're gonna put a coupon code for you guys. Um, we'll give you. So right now we have a two pack that's discounted of our MCT oil, but we'll do um, buy one get one free. Um, so I'll give me a, give me a chance here though. So ours is on back order right now. We're waiting for a new shipment to come in. So you have to be patient. But if you want um, if you want to order one bottle, we'll give you the second one free. And that's not uh, regularly an option. That's just um, something I just thought of right now. Uh, why not reward those that are uh, coming and checking out the show? So um, thank you so much for, for joining live. Hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully that was beneficial. I was I'm guessing that. Um, that was a bit different topic angle than a lot of people were expecting. <laughs> Maybe you were just hoping for it. Just tell me the good fats and the bad fats. But I don't think that that information is all that useful or valuable if you don't have the mindset to match that, right? Like we need a, the proper mindset to match. And that's, a, and that's what we work on with our clients, right? Like a lot of times we see people losing 10, 15, 20 plus pounds, and um, if you don't have the proper mindset, you're not going to keep, keep that, right? Like your mind has to catch up with your body, which is why we work a lot on the mental aspect of training as well. Because like, it, and it's full on self-sabotage. We see people looking at these incredible results and then they panic, right? Like that's a different lifestyle. That's a different person they're seeing in the mirror. Their clothes don't fit. So this new person is wearing different clothes. Like it's a different, like it's, it's a whole different um you're a different person and if your mind doesn't catch up with it you go into full panic mode and you go back and you hit self-sabotage full thr uh, full tilt full throttle and then you lose all the results you've been working so hard for 
So that's why do we do a lot of work um, mentally as well. So at any rate, I'm going to leave you with that. Let shoot, Actually, shoot us a message. Shoot us a DM if you want to take advantage of that special because we don't have it on the website. And I don't want to make a coupon code if there isn't uh, anyone interested. So um, thank you again for joining us live. Have a wonderful week. And um, we'll see you online somewhere, I hope. Bye, everyone.